Hi, I am Ashley Pfeiffer. I am the maker behind Stamped AF. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Winnipeg, Manitoba. If you live anywhere in Canada and do not yet have a demonstrator, I would be so happy to fill that role for you. If you need a catalog, just send me a message at stampedaf at gmail.com. Uh, check out my website, stampedaf.ca. There you can find everything you need to know about placing an order, joining my team. Uh, all my social links are there, so check it out, stampedaf.ca. And without further ado, let's get our craft on. So if you can't already tell, we are making a very fun and bright card today, and I cannot wait to show you this. Uh, our colors are going to be a little bit different from the one that I have made as my sample, but this is what we are going to make. Feel free to add a sentiment or change this however you like, but uh, let's get this party started, shall we? I'll just kind of keep that off to the side. Grab a piece of scrap paper and I have got a piece of Whisper White thick cardstock. It's not necessary that it be the thick paper, but that's what I had prepared. So first we are going to start with some blending. So when I did this yesterday, I started with my sponging method. I quickly realized that that was going to take me forever, so I got out a sponge brayer. This one is a Martha Stewart one. It's one that I have already, so until it no longer works for me, I will use that and I will get a Stampin' Up! one right after that. So I'm just going to ink this up and be sure that you keep rolling so that you don't end up with a line somewhere. And then just start rolling that on. And by going at these angles, you will ensure that you don't end up with a nasty line. Ink it up as necessary. And our next color is Granny Apple Green. And there's no need to try and clean this in between for a couple of reasons. One, we want it to look blended. And two, if you got this wet now, you wouldn't be able to use it for hours. So go all the way to the end. And we can come back after with our lemon lime twist to blend that in a little more. And Bermuda Bay. You will notice that I do not have Bermuda Bay yesterday. It's because I've changed up my color scheme just a little bit. Okay, so now we will switch to the method that I was using yesterday just to clean any lines up. So in case this is the first time you were joining me, this is how I store my stamping sponges and sponge daubers. So each color has a label. This is um, the Brights family, this is the neutrals, and I have two more cases, one for um, 
settles, one for regals, actually settles and regals are together, and then one for in colors, both current and past. So always start off the edge of your paper, and this applies whether you're using one of these type of sponges or the Stampin' Up! sponges. You don't want a harsh line or blob when you first start. You can always put on more ink. It is really hard to remove ink. So I have two of these. We're going to keep that one on there. I just realized that was Granny Apple Green, not Lemon Lime Twist. So the other thing I am keeping in here and will build up as I go along is the uninked Stampin' Spots. Unless you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you don't, you aren't going to have these little ink spots, which are fantastic, by the way, for the Stamparatus. So you can buy them uninked and just use your re-inkers to make your own. And then out of a piece of the coordinating cardstock or um, a label that you've colored, just using your three quarter inch circle punch, put on a label that tells you what color it is. Now, it is not crucial that this line blend perfectly. I am not a master blender. <laughs> As you can see, it will be covered up, so focus more on your edges. one off now and we need Bermuda Bay I always find it amazing to look at my paper as I'm going because you don't think you're getting that much ink, but look at this sheet. <laughs> okay, so that should be good. Now the next thing we are going to do is use our spritzer and give this a little spritz. Now I'm not going to do it on here because I don't want my whole work surface getting wet, so I'm just going to spray that off screen. So give it a generous spritz, and then if you want bigger drops, just spray some water in your hand and kind of chuck it down. Otherwise, you're going to have a fine mist all over everything, and you're not going to have these wonderful dots. And I don't have any paper towel here, so I'm just going to grab a Kleenex. Dab up any of the water that has gotten on my table. And we are ready to start stamping. I am really kicking myself for not ordering the Tropical Escape DSP when I got this stamp set, but I think it forces me to come up with some creative ways of using this stamp set without the DSP. It is fantastic, but I'm forcing creativity here. Okay, so let's get out our stamp set. Tropical Chic. It's just amazing. So you can see that I, well, I guess this way would work. I've got the thinlets on a magnetic sheet inside the stamp case. This is how I always store them. I worry that if I don't store them this way, I'm going to forget that they have thinlets and not use them. So we are going to use this little, I'm going to call it a palm leaf, and this one is, um, I want to say it's Monstera. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but 
They're beautiful, very trendy leaves. So we will start with our Monstera leaf. It's basically monster with an A at the end. And we are going to use Bermuda Bay because that is the color that we've got at the bottom here. And we're going to do one at full strength, one at half strength and try to make sure you don't do what I just did there by getting that little line. So we, now that I have inked this up again, I'm gonna see if I can get this relatively close to where it was. It's good enough. Using my chamois, I'm just going to clean off my stamp. And then I will grab Granny Apple Green and just try and rotate your leaves so that you don't have it in the same place every time. Now if I were going lighter to darker I, it wouldn't really be necessary to clean this in between but I went backwards. Okay, and that's enough for our Monstera leaf. Monstra, Monstera. We will grab this little guy and we are going to use Lemon Twist and just do a couple of him. I think we'll do Bermuda Bay down here. Or Granny Apple Green. I love this Granny Apple Green. so that's it for those leaves. Now we will grab this little guy, which just looks like more leaves, and just do some random ones in here. Being sure to get every color. And I would recommend cleaning them off in between. And there we go, that's it for the background. Now you can see, or I can see, I should have hit this with my heat tool before I stamped these two. But, live and learn, learn from my mistakes. And then you don't have to waste any cardstock or not be thrilled with how your card is turning out. So that is it for the ink, unless you wanna do a sentiment on the inside. Totally up to you. There are some wonderful sentiments in this stamp set. There is a gorgeous thank you. There is with much love and thanks, and you could crop that so it's just love and thanks, and then you are the greatest. We are not using this gorgeous little flower this time. I still need that. So we will set that aside for a few minutes. We are done with all of our blocks. Bring the big shot into the shot. And we are going to use this little guy. So this measures, I believe it's two and a half by two and a half. Two and three quarters, just over three quarters. So you could cut your cardstock first, but with a couple of these, they're well, I'll cut them a little bit so I can use them for something else. Cut your cardstock to three by three. Place it down using some washi tape if you so choose. Pardon my arm there. just kind of pop that down. I don't know if that actually stuck. <laughs> just going to turn this around so you don't have my arm in the shot the entire time. stuck 
down just enough. Use your paper piercing tool to get any remaining pieces out. This is an important step. If you don't do this, when you go to put your next piece of cardstock in, you're going to end up with deeper indentations there because there's already cardstock in that spot. So the next step is to determine the order that you want your leaves to be in. So you can see with this one, I had Lemon Lime Twist on top, and then with the next two, it's kind of hard to tell, but Tranquil Tide, and then, um, oh, what color is that? color is that? I want to say it's Emerald Envy. Is that or Call Me Clover? So I don't want to have those two too close together. I want to have the pool party in between. So the next part we want to figure out is which one is going to be our front. So when we're looking at this, do we want the Bermuda Bay to be a little less obvious or more obvious? I think we probably want this color to be on top. So I'm going to now grab my scissors and just cut these leaves off. And this does not have to be perfect. I'm not sure who would come up and examine it, so don't spend too much time on this part. So you could save that for another project if you wanted. I'm not going to. So you can see the edges are really easy. It's where the leaves are attached that it's a little trickier. And what I was doing was taking um, a nail buffer and just going in and smoothing those edges. So that is our top one and that is going to go, um, I'm just looking at this one. Well, we'll figure it out. I think it's going to go that way. So for the next one, we want to keep these leaves and cut out the Monstera leaves. I sure hope I'm saying that right. With these ones it's easy to go around as you're doing them and round off your branches. Peasy. Okay, so that one's going to go under there. Now we're going to cut these off again. You could actually, for this one, you could probably leave one of each kind of leaf, but I don't want to experiment while I'm filming this. I will leave it to you to figure out if that is going to work. I'm just going to stick with what I know worked yesterday instead of reinventing the wheel while I'm filming. Okay, so that is it and these ones are going to sit in behind those. And you can play around till you get them the way you want. Actually, I think this is the way I had it. Nope. 
this is the way I had it so that this one fills in that gap nicely and then that one is there and then you don't have a huge gap in the middle so you can glue your first one down or adhere it with your adhesive of choice mine as you know if you're if you've been around a bit is Tombow so just put a little bit around your edges and then just eyeball where the middle of your card is going to be whoops and I like to while I'm doing that put a D block down on a diagonal to make sure it's all adhered. Now for the next two, you can use dimensionals, which I think is what I'm going to do. I've got some of these handy dandy foam strips from previous Paper Pumpkin, so I'm not gonna use a full strip on each side. I'm just going to cut it and use them strategically. Actually, cut that even smaller. I would suggest putting them in the corners for sure. And they don't even have to be this big. You can make them smaller if you'd like. You can put them right in the corner, totally up to you. So I have a question for you crafters. When you are crafting, what do you do? Do you listen to music? Do you watch TV? Do you, do you need to have it quiet? What is your ideal craft environment? For me, music is, um, I get overstimulated really easily. So I find that Netflix is good for me typically binge watching a show. I'm getting smarter this time. I'm cutting them while they're still in here instead of on my hand. So if you want to comment below, tell me what your favorite while crafting activity is. Or maybe it's just crafting. Maybe you don't like to have anything else on the go. For me, too much quiet is not good. <laughs> not particular at all though. might be overkill but again if you've seen any of my videos before you know that I don't like things sagging in the middle if I'm gonna go through all this effort I want it to be just right If you have a suggestion for a video that you'd like to see me do, please either send me an email at stampedaf at gmail.com or comment below or send me a message. I do have a new video each week and there are so many new stamp sets that I've gotten that I want to do a video on each one, but if there is a technique or a stamp set that you would like me to focus on, please do let me know. Okay, so that one was going to go off to the side like that. I'm hoping this doesn't lift it too much. But if you can't tell from this one, it ends up lying a little flat with just the one level of dimensionals. 
so I want to add some more dimension. So this one cannot go there. It needs to go there. That one will cover it up. Oh shoot, which way did I have it? <laughs> I think it was this way. Keep playing till I find it. <laughs> it must be that way. So you could just do the two layers. Now, if I put another layer of these dimensionals, this thing will cost a fortune to mail. Typically, I don't mail my cards, so I'm not concerned, but if you are, make sure you use just regular dimensionals cut up, which is what I'm gonna do for this layer. So just take some of your minis or regulars and cut along the edge. This is the perfect size for this narrow border. There's probably have more than enough here, but I'm on a roll. Gorgeous. Okay, so to finish off that unfinished edge, we are going to use our stitched square framelits, which I have mounted on a magnet. For ease of use, I was getting so tired of pulling, <coughs> excuse me, pulling them out of my drawer. So we are going to use the largest stitched one and the largest non-stitched one, <laughs> if that makes sense. So we will grab our piece of lemon lime twist because that is the one color that we haven't used. And it just so happens that when I was going to cut it out, it didn't cooperate. So we're going to use it that way. <laughs> stitched one on there. Okay, I had that backwards. So that is the outside and we need one that's smaller for the inside. I cannot wait for stamped, Stampin' Up! to have double stitched dies where you get both a negative and a positive because it would be stitched. Sorry, I'm just outside the frame. If it were stitched with a cut and then stitched again, you would get both a negative and a positive. And there are other brands out there that do that and I really wish Stampin' Up! would offer that in all of the stitched shapes. Now, 
when this video goes live, um, you will probably already have heard of this promotion, but for current and demonstrators that are people that are just about to sign up to be a demonstrator have access to a new promotional exclusive set for demonstrators only and it can be added to a starter kit it is called color your season and it has some exclusive products that will not be in any catalog going forward which is kind of a shame um, so there's some great watercolor pencil colors. There is um, stitched framelits, which do exactly what I was just talking about. So you would end up with your square in the middle and a square on the outside that are both stitched. However, those the ones that are coming out are not squares. Um, but you get the idea. And then there's an exclusive stamp set, which is great for coloring. So that is all very exciting. So on this one, I used white. This one, we're just gonna use the Lemon Lime Twist. And I am just going to run a small bead of Tombow as close to the edge as I can because this is smaller than the squares. You could add another layer in between if you wanted. because it just fits, like just. <laughs> so again, you can use that D, D block to get your card to sit right where you need it to. Sorry, the pressure to be right where you need it to be so that that sets. And then we're just going to attach that to an Emerald Envy card base, and voila! So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button below. I have a new video each and every week, and I would be thrilled for you to come along on the ride, and uh, we'll get our craft on. Thanks for joining, friends. Bye!